Hi, I'm Eddie of Eddie's Reef Aquaria. Today's video is on one of the corals that I recently purchased and I hadn't gotten around to them to people that follow me know that I talk about each individual animal, whether it's a coral or a fish, when I go ahead and get them and I go into basic information. So today is one of those videos. I'm going to talk about the tricolor acro. I'm going to do some basic information, not complicated stuff. So I hope you enjoy the video and find it uh, educational, fun, and interesting. So let's take a deep dive. Hold on. Okay, and here we are in front of the tank, of course, focused to the tricolor acro. Well, this is what I found out in my uh, little research. First of all, as all of you must be aware, it's an SPS coral, of course, meaning uh, small polyp stony corals. Now, when it comes to the term tricolor, this generally refers to an acropora that has bright green polyps, as uh, so let's say color number one, purple tips or purple branches, let's call it color number two, and a brown base or brown lower branch area, calling it, for argument's sake, color number three, but can vary in reference to water condition, lighting, etc., etc. These generally are thicker branched acroporas that have tended to be very difficult to maintain coloration in captivity. Now, when it comes to certain specifics, first of all, the scientific name that I found close, as closest as possible to this uh, species would be called Acropora valida, and that I'll put it on top of the video. Now, the range, or in other words, where these acros come from, they are known to come from Fiji, Tonga, Jarkata, and the Solomon Islands. The disposition of this coral is known to be semi-aggressive. So, that being said, you shouldn't place it too close to other corals because it might sting it. Although, being an SPS, it doesn't have long tentacles, or feelers, shall we call it, that comes out like the LPS corals. Placement, when it comes to this coral, and generally when it comes to SPS, and especially acros, the placement for this coral should be between middle to high when it comes uh, to your uh, tank. Now, lighting, of course, being an SPS, it should be high, now that's after acclimation, and very important, after acclimation. And then the flow for this type of coral should be between moderate and strong. Now, before I go any further, I thought I uh, stressed the point when it comes to placement, water, and, and then, you know, the uh, lighting. I've mentioned this before on previous videos, and I thought I'd mention it now. Uh, what I have found out in the new school of thought of, uh, in general, it doesn't matter if it's an SPS, LPS, or softy. Uh, when it comes to corals, if a coral, quote unquote, if a coral is properly, uh, uh, properly acclimated, any coral can be placed in any part of the uh, tank. Again, as long as your, uh, uh, let's say, your water chemistry is in check, or shall we call it, uh, within range. But any coral probably, uh, probably acclimated can be placed in any part of the uh, tank. And that holds true because I have certain corals here that uh, they are supposed to be low lights, and yet, since I prob uh, pro uh, probably, I keep getting stuck on the word, since I properly acclimated the uh, coral, uh, there's corals that, like I mentioned, are supposed to be low lights. They're actually in the middle portion of the tank, and they're thriving, they're, they're, they're doing fine. So, I mean, this is just a rule of thumb, or shall we call it a baseline, uh, when it comes to, like, let's say the placement, the lighting, and the flow. But if they're acc acclimated properly, you can place them in any part of the uh, tank. Of course, keeping an eye watch on your uh, uh, behavior of all your animals. 
I constantly, uh, I'm constantly checking um, the, the corals, the fish, the other, in, uh, you know, the invertebrates and all that uh, to see how they're behaving. And like I've mentioned before on previous videos, if you start to learn uh, the behavior of each of your corals, your fish, and your inverts, you can actually, before even checking your water chemistry, your water parameters, you can more or less tell that something's going on. So that that's something that I thought I would throw out there. Now the next uh, bullet point that I made on this is, uh, as I mentioned before, but I'll go more into detail. It is a tree growing pattern species of acro with well spaced turbular coralites. Now the colony can reach a large size. This is one of the sturdiest and easily adaptable species because although they prefer strong currents and being close to the surface, you can also find these acroporos sitting below 10 meters deep ledges and on inlet areas of reef lagoons. Now when it comes to certain parameters, the CA, in other words the calcium, should be no less than 425 ppms. It could be a little higher, but that's the, uh, the uh, baseline. The lowest when it comes to CA should be around 425 ppms. And the DKH, of course, uh, alkalinity, should be, I'd say, within a range between 8 and 9 DKH. Now, when it comes to feeding, although they are photosynthetic, they do need to be fed, let's say, amino acids and zooplankton foods. And finally, when it comes to the care level, uh, this coral, I would say, would be considered uh, intermediate uh, when it comes to uh, reef keepers. So that's basically what I wanted to touch basis with all of you out there when it came to this coral. Now I'm going to go ahead and before I close, I'm going to pan uh, in general the uh, tank and uh, so you can see what's been going on. So hold on one second. Okay, what I'm going to do is just take you like to certain corals so you can see and appreciate the actual growth. This, for instance, is the Cinellaria. Uh, if you guys follow me, the ones that do, you'll see that, my God, this coral was, I say, one third of this size and it has grown and grown exponentially. And then um, the, uh, we're actually with a tie rod, it's actually held and it created like, let's say, shall we call it a loop? Well, it's actually growing and growing more. That, that would be like those little back there, you know, it, it's growing and growing. Okay, now here on the left side of the tank, uh, the mummy's eye uh, is doing great. As a matter of fact, if I was able to get a closer shot, you would actually see it's got like feelers and on the side, there's uh, it's encrusting towards the, I would say, to, towards the side. And then up there on the right-hand side, using the chalice, the mummy's eye, and going as the center focal point, and then going to the right upper hand, that's uh, Hollywood Starner, and it's uh, doing great. It's gotten a little brownish, and that might have been because of the uh, PO4 that was a bit high, so it might have browned it out a little bit. But other than that, it's uh, doing great. That coral, uh, I'm thinking, that that's not glued, so I might bring it down, and I might put uh, one of these uh, corals up there like, I'm thinking of putting the tricolor there, but I haven't made the decision yet. But I might bring it down. I might. Now back there, the club polyps, they're doing great. It was, I think, three, three little polyps, and look at them grow. They're growing and growing and growing. Okay, now these candy canes, when I was referring to on this video, get to know your organisms, get to know your corals, and they're an indicator. Before you even check the uh, water, something's wrong. Okay, these are one of the corals that I'm talking about. For instance, this little frag of uh, candy cane, it was actually two and now it's turned three. When something is not right on this tank, uh, like if I need to do a water change or coming up a water change, those polyps 
that you're seeing out that are extended uh, will actually tend to close a little bit. Now, on my previous video that I talked about PO4 and NO3, if the phosphates uh, were a, a bit high, uh, out of, you know, out of normal, but a little way up there, these uh, guys tended to actually close. But yet, when I had enough nutrients, not that, that high when it came to the phosphates and nitrates, they opened up beautifully. So this is one of the corals, as I was mentioning before, this is one of the corals that I talk about when it comes to learn about your uh, corals. L look at their behaviors, observe them. And this is one of them that I use as an indicator to see if there's anything going wrong on the water chemistry of this reef tank. And then I thought I'd show you these uh, little combo section, shall we call it. The cephastra is doing great. The uh, polyps are opened up. That's the green one in the middle, and it'll start to encrust. And then on the right-hand side, that mushroom, which is a high-end mushroom, it was, I mean, half that size. It's growing big, big, big. And then on the left-hand side, the recordia, as all of you that follow me, it was one, and now it's gone to two. And I wouldn't doubt it if it starts to split to make it three. And this, of course, is a general shot of how the tank looks as a whole. Well, there it is. I hope you enjoyed the video, found it interesting, fun, educational when it came to the uh, tricolor acro. And then some certain shots that I thought I shoot of more of the, you know, the highlights of the tank, uh, different corals that have really grown exponentially. Uh, when it comes to coral growth, uh, not all corals grow at the same rate. Uh, there's corals that will grow faster than others, corals that you barely will see that they're actually growing, but trust me, they actually are. So, but I thought I'd show you the ones that really stand out for me, and I hope for all of you out there, some basic ones that I thought that, you know. So I hope you enjoyed the video. You found it fun, educational. And like I say at the end of all of my videos, but before I do that, don't forget to uh, subscribe to my channel. And if you like the video, hit, hit the thumbs up, the like button. And then, like I say, at all of the end of my videos, happy reefing. Thank you for watching. And until next time, bye-bye.